Oh, time travelers. People are complaining that the intro to Marvel's new show, Secret Wars, is crap. And they're mad. They're saying stuff like, they're stealing the work from the artists and whatever. And I'm going to show you a compelling argument why I think it's not stealing work from the artist and that it's amazing. And that's what this video is about. Everybody should stop complaining. This is my look of disapproval. Well, the first reason is that only Luddites complain when new technology comes along and they're afraid of things changing. What's a Luddite? A person opposed to new technology or ways of working. Historically, a member of any of the bands of English workers who destroyed machinery, especially in cotton and woolen mills, that they believed was threatening their jobs. During the years of 1811 to 1816. I want to be wearing their shirt! If it weren't for cotton mills, you freaking Luddites! If you haven't seen the intro to this show that I've been talking about, here's a little bit of it right here. And when I saw this show, sorry, I don't watch shows immediately when they came out, so I didn't know what people were talking about until I watched this show last week. And I now see it immediately when I saw this. You're seeing what's happening between the frames is this transition between the frames that can't be done with any other art system that we have right now. It's generating frames in between the frames that create an artificial type of movement. I actually know how to do this. It's a plug-in in an AI tool called Stable Diffusion, and the plugin is called Deforum. So rewind a little bit. When I first learned about AI-generated images, and this is coming from someone who's actually an artist, I went to college for it and I dropped out because I realized that artists don't make a weekly paycheck. But I create music, I create videos, I did a lot of drawing and painting back in the day. But when I found out about this, I'm like, ooh, what is this tool and can I use it? And here I am in my Discord and obviously I'm gonna be giving you guys a link to my Discord if you're interested in the description of what's it below. And I tried Mid Journey. It was kind of annoying, like, the earlier AI generation tools that I used that were free, they were online, and they were kind of stupid and made funky stuff. But then I heard Min Journey was really good, but you have to install it in Discord. I'm like, what? And I did a few things, and it's just, just one example where I just said the prompt was Rainbow Princess, because that's a really cringe character on my channel that I play sometimes. And it made these images. And I had to generate other stuff, and then I found out, oh, that was just a free trial! And I was like, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be paying to generate images. I don't see why at this time. Then I found another one that said it was free. I used it on and off for a few months, and it turns out that was just a free trial as well, called Blue Willow. And it's not nearly as good as Mid Journey, because this is the same prompt. Like, what? What's happening right now? But then I thought, can I generate images without restrictions? Because there's political restrictions in these online ones, including the ones you install in Discord. And sometimes when you're trying to generate something, it thinks you mean something else. It thinks you mean nudity or NSFW, and you don't, and it won't make anything close to it, and you can't even tell that's what you're doing until you think about it later. You go, oh, maybe it didn't want me to generate that image. It's hard to explain, but the online ones are trying to block that kind of stuff, and they've programmed in limitations, and when you've done that to an AI tool, you can't tell if that limitation is what's stopping you. So I wanted to have one I could install on my computer, and I didn't want to pay for one for it to just spit out stuff and I don't know what's happening when I'd rather just pay an electric bill and I have control over what's going on and I could research how it works and figure out what its limitations are and the most important thing to me is can I do it privately because I don't want somebody to be leaking my data later or saying we've kicked you out of our program or deleted your account because of your prompt or something who knows what could happen so then I discovered stable diffusion and I've done videos on it and if you're curious about installing it on your own computer, you can click this card right here, boop, and learn how to install it. Hey, this is Future slash Editing Me, just here to provide some more context that I realized the video might need while I was doing my first pass of editing. Look, I have it installed on my computer, and here's an image of Amelia Clark. She's one of the actors on the show, and I'm going to be showing you how I think they used this tool to create the intro. But Stable Diffusion is an open source freeware software that anybody can use and it's being developed by a community. But before I did videos on Stable Diffusion, I was teaching myself how to use it. And I came across a plugin called Deforum. 
And here's just three quick examples of what deform can do. Say I wanted the number 17 and I wanted certain things in the background on this particular thing. And I'm not explaining what it is because that's spoilers because that's going to be in a future video series that I have coming out called The Book of Emo. But I needed something that did specifically this and I knew deform could do it. And there's one where I wanted it to say 2600. Tiny spoiler, that's a tribute to the build number of Windows XP. And here's one where I wanted to, to say something where a number wouldn't come up. It was like a glitch. But this wasn't the first thing I did in Deform. I wanted to make a music video, which I still haven't finished because Deform is so difficult to work with. So if anybody is saying those people on Marvel suck because they took a, a real artist job away and just gave $50 to some guy to generate something in two hours, I'm telling you, no! The intro to me looks like it took a couple of months to make. You start with generating images like this. You. You spend a couple hours playing around with a prompt until you get something that looks kind of like what you want. And you set the batch number to like 100 and you hit run and you go to bed. And then when you wake up, you've got like 10 maybe good ones and you have to choose which one of those single images you want to use. So I'm going to be showing you a tiny bit about my music video that I'm still working on. Here's what they call guiding images. And I got one, two, and three. And when you're using the form, if you don't have guided images, it will not be anywhere close to what you want after a few frames because it's just gonna do whatever it's hard to explain but deform is generating images and it's looking at what the one frame is and then morphing it into something else while still using the prompt so let's say if you have a prompt that's a drawing of a house and the next one is like a different drawing of a house but it's going to go from this drawing to that drawing but after a few frames it looks really funky unless you have guiding images so if you're curious and you want to pause this video and see how to generate images in Stateable Diffusion, click this card right here. Bleep. Learn that. Just know that generating images to specifically what you want it to be is time consuming and there's a lot of work behind it. It is just another tool for an artist. But if you want to go from generating images to making a video with the forum, at a brilliant levels of complexity. I taught myself using Fizzledorf's animation guide to form. Link in the description if you want to see it. And I'm learning what all these tabs are and all, all these functions do. And then I get down to the zoom and I'm seeing sign. I'm like, oh my gosh. They're not using calculus, are they? Because I always got A's in math until I got to high school and I took calculus. And that's when my brain noped out. It literally said, nope, I'm done with math. But look at this crap they're trying to explain to us. Like, what? What? So if you watch this intro again, you see it looks like the camera's moving and you see that little jump to that nuclear explosion thing? That was done using calculus. They wanted it to zoom a whole bunch for a certain number of frames and then they wanted it to slow down. So in a music video, one of the methods you do is you render a file with just the beat. Let's say you want the video to go to the beat. I'm grabbing my headphones so I, I make sure I know what I'm talking about here. So. Here's my project that I've been working on, and you can see the first frame looks like the guided image that I showed you earlier. If you noticed, it's doing kind of funky stuff, like the skin starts to look weird, and that's because of something that's called emergent behavior. I found out that even though I was really heavy in the prompt that this is a female, it kept trying to draw a male. So annoying! So basically what emergent behavior is, is unexpected results from anything that's AI generated, not just images. But I've got a couple examples for Stable Diffusion. Here's when I was making a embedding for Charlie's Theron. And this first row is an example of when it was overtrained and it kept making her look like she was like 65 years old or something, like all these wrinkles in her skin. And I chose random seeds. And the bottom row is the same seeds, but with another embedding I trained later and it looks you know, pretty decent. And what happens when something's overtrained, not just giving you unexpected results, it also becomes inflexible and you can't control stuff like the hair color or eyes or different things. Here's another example. This Amelia Clark picture that I made was generated using this embedding that I found on a website called Civit AI. And if you'll notice that kind of looks cartoony just a tiny bit and that's because it's become overtrained and inflexible and I'll show you what I mean on this next tab I've done the same exact prompt everything in here is exactly the same as the first one except I've added these two Laura's one adds detail and this other one gives more beautiful eyes but I only added a tiny bit 
50% Laura strength in this generation by doing 30% of this plus the 20% of that. And look at what happened to her face. It's... no. No. And the jacket! Like, what's going on? It, it's so weird! If you actually are using Stable Diffusion and you're interested to learn more, click this card to check it out. Bloop. Which I think is the reason why the Marvel Secret Wars intro keeps changing every so many frames, because it started making stuff they didn't want it to make. But that's just a guess. But you also see how the motion of the video is following the beat. How I got it to do that was I used this site called Audio to Keyframe String Generator, and I went in my music and rendered out a track of just the percussion track. Like that. Stop playing! I'm done listening to that, thank you. And it spits out this gigantic list of numbers. And this is not using calculus, it's just saying when it wants to zoom at what frame number because it detected the beats in the audio file I gave it. Now I'm in Deform and you can see where I copy pasted that in. But if you watch the Secret Wars intro carefully, you'll see that they tried to carefully control the zoom, which hats off to them for that. Achieving viral fame is a lot harder than it looks. Hats off to that farting priest. Now here's a quick rundown of Deform for anybody that's curious. You've got the Run tab where this is similar to generating an image. You've got the sampling steps and the CFG scale. And what that means is when generating an image, you start from noise. It just looks like static. And there's millions of these, but they're all different. And it tries to follow your prompt, whatever you put in this box up here, to change it into an image that is in your prompt. Sampling steps, the higher the number that means is the more steps the AI has taken to get to that image. If you give it too many steps, it looks weird. If you give it too few steps, it looks weird. And the CFG scale means, I actually said that wrong in the first recording, so I cut that, I'm gonna say it correctly now. The higher CFG scale means it more closely follows your prompt. The lower CFG scale means the AI is more creative. And again, too low it looks weird, too high it looks weird. So you have to play with that, so that's a lot of time. But back over into forum, You've got the steps, and there's no CFG scale. Where's the CFG scale? It's in another one of these tabs later. Not only that, you can't make a freaking 16 by 9 generation with Deform. It, it bugs out and does weird, so you have to make squares, which is why I did 1024 by 1024. And see, this is square right here. I haven't changed it. But some of these other ones, I have keyframes in here where, see, I've cropped in to where it only shows this part. Hey, future me here again, just to explain a little bit more about 16 by 9, if you don't know. It's the ratio that I use for videos, but I don't know what they're using in the intro because it's not 16 by 9, it's wider. If you look here, it's got bars on the top and the bottom. This is a 16 by 9 screen cap that I did. I just did a 16 by 9 versus 4 by 3. So any of y'all that have been around since the 80s or 90s know the 4 by 3 looks like this. If you throw 4x3 onto a 16x9 TV, the left and the right are chopped off. So maybe Secret Wars intro is 21x9, because look at that, there's a 16x9 TV, and the top and bottom are chopped off. But that means they had to chop off even more from their generation from the top and bottom. And what I mean is that they have to generate a square to, to reduce the number of glitches and emergent behavior and whatever, because all the stable diffusion data sets are a whole bunch of square images. So, great example, here's the data set that I used to train the Charlie's Theron embedding that I made. All the images are square. Keyframes tab, this is where the zoom is, and any other motion, so you can have it like rotate or turn or whatever. And you might notice a couple times in the Secret Wars Invasion intro, they do that. Noise, I don't mess with this one, coherence, anti-blur, depth and warping, so much stuff. Here's the CFG thing I was telling you about earlier. And in this case, I was using CFG of 10 instead of 7, like the default is on this tab right here. But you can literally put a whole bunch of numbers, because zero means start at the first frame. You could tell it at every single frame what you want the CFG scale to be. The seed, okay, okay. The seed means which noise do I use, because Earlier I told you there's like a million different noise images that they all look like snow static like a TV that's broken But they're not and you see I had to use a seed schedule 
so that it was actually following my guided images better. And I had to write scripts that spat out this so that it was accurate. That took time. Then you've got the prompts tab. So here's the prompt. This is literally me writing more than one prompt because you got frame number 3105 is this prompt, but frame number zero is this prompt. And I said, I don't want any nudity or NSFW in here. And there's the init. If you don't have an init, sometimes the first frame looks weird, which is just a guided image again. Watch, I'll load it for you. See, there's the guided image, is the init. Control net, which is a whole other bag of worms I didn't even get into. Hint. Control net is how I got these numbers to appear and stay right there in these video things I made. And each one of these took a full day of prompt engineering and editing to get them to work and produce the results I wanted. So that should tell you that Stable to Forum is not replacing artists. It's just giving them a new tool that they have to use. If they're up for the task, that is. A hybrid video, something else I don't even know how to do. Output, here you set your FPS for the video and you have to upscale it if you want it to be high res in the end. And when this is done, you have to wait like a couple hours for it to finish doing that. Forget about it. So these are the reasons why I think the Marvel Secret Invasion intro is amazing. Number one, they are using tools that I have access to, that you have access to. Subscribe to the channel to learn more. Make sure you click the stupid bell. I complain about it all the time, but YouTube won't notify you if you don't change the bell setting. Number two, Marvel is trying new stuff. Bleeding edge stuff. That's amazing. Come on. Oh, I would just rather they kept using old tools for their art. Oh, come on. Stop being a Luddite. Number three. Three. Their intro does have room for improvement, but they're learning stuff. And they're going to make amazing stuff in the future if they keep learning how to use Stable Diffusion. And number fourth, this many, from me from the future. The intro, in my opinion, artistically represents how the scrolls morph when they want to disguise themselves as a human. Check this out. I'm going to move this slider back and forth and show you something. So right here, we've got this character morphing, and that's just changing the guided images and the prompts per frame. And then you've got some more people here morphing, because the whole point of the show is you don't know who's a scroll and who's a human. There's some cops morphing, just trying to be friends with the scrolls, which is what Nick Fury was doing originally. And there's some leaders morphing in our country at the White House. Da -da -dun. And there, if you see right here, are other faces and eyes appearing, which may be emergent behavior, as it were. That happens because it wants to generate your prompt in the middle, and then sometimes it tries to put other faces on the sides, which is another reason why they're only using short little segments. But those are probably happy accidents, having extra eyes in the backgrounds might represent the scrolls are spying on you. Those are all the reasons why I think it is so freaking cool that they use the forum. And now for the end screen, which is always awkward because I don't plan it and I have to point like where things are. So how about this one? This is how to install Stable Diffusion, that video. And then here's some tips about how to use it. And then you can subscribe to my channel over here. And then my music channel is over here because when I finish that music video with the form, it is going to be up there. Thanks for watching all the way to the end and I will see you in the next video.